the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, welcome you to Mass uh, this morning. Uh, I'm cheating a little bit, if that's okay. Um, I was faced with a tyranny of choice this morning. I can either celebrate Tuesday in the eighth week in ordinary time, I could celebrate St. Cochran of Stenning, which would be very appropriate because diocesan saints. I could celebrate the Mass called St. Jerome Emiliani, but I'd have to go and look him up. We could celebrate the Mass for St. Josephine Vaquita, which would be very appropriate because she's patron of modern day slavery and that's such a terrible thing that affects us all. But I've decided instead to celebrate a votive Mass of Our Lady, votive Mass of Our Lady, Our Lady of Lewis, anticipating Friday because that's the Mass I celebrated with Year 9 this morning at St Richard's and it means I didn't have to prepare two homilies. We're offering our Mass for Elizabeth Francis, the repose of her soul, eternal rest front unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. She's actually a benefactor of the church. If you look over into the windows, she paid for the Lourdes windows of the church. So we're very grateful for her eternal gift here in St Mary Magdalene. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the Word made flesh, the splendour of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, Lord God, that we, your servants, be given protection in our weakness, that we who keep the memorial of the Immaculate Mother of God may, with the help of her intercession, rise up from our iniquities through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen.
noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the traditions of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of Scripture. This people honours me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions. And he said to them, how ingeniously you get round the commandment of God in order to preserve your own tradition. For Moses said, do your duty to your father and your mother, and anyone who curses father or mother must be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, anything I have that I might have used to help you is Corban, that is dedicated to God, then he is forbidden from that moment to do anything for his father or mother. In this way you make God's word null and void for the sake of your tradition which you have handed down. And you do many other things like this. The Gospel of the Lord. It might be uh, worthwhile just telling you a little bit about what Father Tristan and I have been doing in St. Richard's uh, for year nine. We recognise that it's a very difficult year for them. They've got over the, the transition, year seven and year eight, but they're not quite into GCSE year yet, not into confirmation year. And we reckon it's the year where we lose most of them from the faith. And to, whether we get them back is another question altogether. So we've been having a special mission year with them. And uh, today we wanted to bring everything we considered already to the sacrifice of the Mass. They're not great philosophical thinkers. But that's fair enough, they are only year nine. I'm still not a very good philosophical thinker, but we have been trying to tackle some of the issues that they want to look at. And uh, the one we've been looking at recently is that relationship between science and religion. You know, we've heard that, we've heard that phrase over the last uh, year, follow the science. And um, some people might say that by following the science, at times, it may have led us up the garden path. Indeed, the science has actually evolved and changed over the year. What we knew about COVID in March 2020 and what we know about it in March 2022 is not the same. You know, you know in terms of the whole idea that you know, we could get COVID from touching a bench in March 2020, to now thinking actually we don't probably pick it up by touch. It's all that face to face and hence why the masks have come in. I'm no scientist, you'll have to go and ask them uh, why that is. But they've very much fallen into this trap that uh, science has replaced religion. And we've been trying to debunk that. We've actually been trying to show them that no church, no science, no church, there's no real universities, and that's the same for some of the other uh, religions as well. Remember, Islam, when it was in its heyday, was very intellectual. It's lost its way a little bit in the world, but you know, faith and science go very well together. And I think one of the problems that people have with faith when it comes to the world is this question of suffering and pain. And one of the reasons why we therefore we chose our Lady of Lourdes today for the year nine mass is because it invites us to think about uh, suffering. Uh, it's well day for the sick on Friday with the feast of Our Lady of Lourdes and also a little bit 
allows us also the idea of cures and miraculous cures to keep our faith and reason in, in check. I've been asked a number of times, how do we get around suffering? I don't know whether you can get around it. I'm afraid I think you have to go through it. And uh, Jesus shows us that by going through it, we come out the other side. You know, if you go, th if you go through his passion on Good Friday, a lot of people end the conversation there. They go, they've done their, their Easter duties. They don't follow it through and they don't join the celebration on Easter Sunday or the Easter Vigil in the Holy Night to end up in the Garden of the Resurrection. And Jesus shows us that he'll always understand our pains and sufferings. So we will never be able to go to God and say at the end of our life, oh, but you don't know how hard it was for me. And he'll go, well, I do, because by dying and accepting death, even on the cross, he shows us that he's experienced everything we can possibly experience. Betrayal, denial, torture, humiliation. You know, dying on the cross is one of the worst possible ways to go. In fact, it's how we get this word excruciating. We talk about our pain is excruciating. That word literally meaning pain which comes from the cross. And he accepts that to bring about um, humanity's redemption. And you know, of course, that all sickness is a consequence of original sin. When our humanity was wounded and broken, and Jesus comes to redeem that. And through his, he does it through his humanity, but he also does it through his goodness, his innocence, if you like, his godliness. And that make, allows him to become both priest and victim. And he can transform um, suffering into sacrifice. He can do nothing about getting candle oil up your nose. And so I was asking them to really think about their engagements with Mass. You know, that idea that, that word remember, do this in memory of me, remember. Literally again, meaning to participate again. To participate again in the cross represented uh, before our eyes. That continuation of his sacrifice where he pours out his blood for the forgiveness of sins. I was reminded at the end of Mass that Bishop Richard said in his last uh, diocesan newsletter to us all, it's time to come back to in-person worship. You know, the live streaming's been great. It will still have its place, it will still have a use. But at some point we need to be here, we need to be here, that place where heaven and earth are united, that place where we learn how to pass through suffering into, into eternal life. And Our Lady invites us to learn, because she also wants us to see how the world should be. Because in the, the sick, the disabled, the vulnerable, they have private place. They're treated as VIPs. They're top of the priority list in God's domain. It's a sign to us of how God's going to transform our weak and frail humanity. And in the fullness of time, resurrect it after the pattern of his own glorious body. Now, of course, people will, when you talk about nerds, they go, oh, Father, do you really believe in all those miraculous cures? And, uh, yeah, I think we should be rightly sceptical of miraculous cures, because they don't happen very often. You know, in the 164 years since Our Lady's apparition of nerds, it's only been about 70, I think, off the top of my head. You know, and for it to be approved, we have to be absolutely certain that the person was sick. Their cure has to be immediate and total. And the clincher, all the medical authorities have to have exhausted all other natural explanations. But this is where we have to sometimes distinguish between a cure and a healing. Because a healing is very different, and I suspect that there have been thousands and from thousands of healings in Lourdes. You know, a healing where you experience spiritual peace, where you experience a strength or a courage to manage your condition, or just an acceptance that your terminal illness is exactly that, you know, and that you will still be able to praise God and thank Him for all the blessings in life. And above all, I think all of us who have been as helpers in words can just see the inspiration that some of these people who are sick give us. 
Remember, our Lord did not promise us a life free from suffering, but by his passion he shows us that all the pains we experience in this life are nothing compared to the glory that is to be revealed to us. Fingers crossed, COVID will start to ease over the next few weeks and months, and pilgrimages to Lourdes, uh, which are being planned in the diocese, will go ahead. And if you have a chance to go, go. That's the simple message. It's a long way around to get to that, but go. bread we offer you, created the earth and work with human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Through the divine and worth of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. of the only begotten Son come, to, O Lord, to our aid, and may he who at the, his birth from the Blessed Virgin did not diminish but consecrated her integrity by taking from us now our wicked deeds, make our oblation acceptable to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> oh, Lord, I'll be with you. truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give thee thanks lord holy father almighty and eternal god and to praise bless and glorify your name on this devoted mass of the blessed ever virgin mary for by the overshadowing of the holy spirit she conceived your only begotten son and without losing the glory of virginity brought forth into the world the eternal light jesus christ our lord through him the angels praise your majesty dominions adore and powers tremble before you Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord. so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, 
which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks as you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Richard our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honour is yours forever and ever. the Saviour's command and formed by the divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us all, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant us in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive the heavenly sacrament, we beseech you, O Lord, your mercy, that we who rejoice in commemorating the Blessed Virgin Mary may by imitating her so worthy the mystery of our redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, Father Rajesh will be back uh, from India to say Mass with you on Friday morning at 10 o'clock for the feast day of Our Lady of Lourdes. Uh, I'm going to deanery now. Apparently I'm supposed to be there in 14 minutes. I don't think that's going to happen. Um, and then I'm going to, to my dad to celebrate his birthday and then for half term I'm going to Devon. Uh, and when I'm back after half term, uh, hopefully the plan is to return to a much more normal and stable uh, mass time provision. But of course funerals and school commitments do always affect that. Uh, so if you are going away for half term or got any looking after any grandkids or nephews and nieces over half term, I hope they don't run you too ragged. And may the Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God.